Well, hello there. I'm on the floor with a bunch of books. They're all about art, drawing, painting, printing, graphic design, map making, all sorts of glorious things. And I'm going to share them with you now, as soon as I can get up off the floor. Let's get into it. <laughs> all right, art lovers, I have a stack of books to show you. So I'm just going to whiz through them and hopefully you'll find something that will resonate with you. I'm going to start with drawing books. I really love these books. These are uh, published by Quarry and they're just a series of adorable little books that can encourage anyone of all age to just get illustrating. We all know that the more we illustrate, the better we get and we just have to put the work in. If you're a fashion lover, then this is the book for you. And basically, you just draw in the book or in your own scrapbook or your own journal and you imitate the images or you create your own and it's just again a way to just hone your skills. This is Draw Awesome Animals, 500 of them and again it's just learning different ways to draw animals, different styles. Here's one with patterning. Some are more realistic, some are more abstract but there's just great inspiration and literally if you're wanting to learn to draw and improve your line work it's just a matter of copying these animals uh, and kids can do this really, really easily. I love the simplicity of these. We have this fabulous series again by, by Quarry. Uh, and this one is by Eloise Renouf. And I really love this one, 20 Ways to Draw a Tree. But she's also done a variety of natural elements. Look at these nests. Oh, these logs. I mean, come on, just beautiful. Uh, and again, you can draw on this side or you can do them in your own journal. Different types of grasses, flowers, uh, herbs, snowflakes, pine cones. I did a heap of these pine cones. Absolutely gorgeous. My, my beloved Owen Davy. This is written by Georgia Amson Bradshaw. It's published by Ivy Kids. And this is Explore and Draw Patterns. It's an art activity book, but again, it's not only for kids. We can enjoy these as well. And I just am obsessed with patterning. I'm going to show you some patterning books too. Patterning is actually harder than you'd think. You'd think it would be easy to come up with patterns. It's just not. So love this idea that you or the kids can copy these particular patterns into a simple outlined image. Look at this absolutely gorgeous the most sophisticated activity book i would play with this just so many i've got to try to calm down all right this one's a good one this is an osborne book and candace watmore is the creator and i started uh, playing around with this book when i started working on evie and pog because i was doing line drawings for the book comprehensive line drawings and i just wanted to develop my line work I did a heap of these characters and what I love about this book is that you can actually just do step by step and then of course you can add your own elements and change it up and make it more unique to you but I just love the strength of the line work in this it's it's very simple shapes but they come together in really gorgeous characters and kids or you can create an entire catalogue of different characters and you know moving their eyes around changing the shapes of their noses doing their hair all sorts of things um, I did a lot of this and it was so helpful for my line work this is a vintage book well it's a reproduction vintage book a facsimile edition of the 1913 original this is what to draw and how to draw it by E.G. Lutz and the publisher is Lom Art it's just the most charming book, even if you're not an illustrator. It's just actually just charming to own. And again, step-by-step -step, uh, sort of system where you can create all of these various images. It's just so fun to, to go through it and try it for yourself and look at the beautiful retro styling. You know, such simple forms and lines that just help grow your muscle memory. It features animals, people, love these people. I did a bunch of these, practiced with these, and gosh, I had a lot of fun with them. Really quirky and cool. How to Draw Everything, Victor Perard, and this one is published by Dover. And similarly, I believe this is a vintage as well. If not, it certainly looks like it's been around a while. But I just love the way it's laid out and designed. Uh, it starts with shading techniques, which is really helpful to learn. 
and then talks about um, the different pencil, pen and brush techniques, the different types of pencils. And then I love this, it goes, you know, if you're doing a landscape, where do you start? So it talks about fundamental mapping out of the shapes, then bringing in uh, shading to uh, portray the, the, obviously the near distant and far parts of the image. Um, here it's got grouping of trees and how to do that. Here we cover perspective, which is absolutely brilliant. It's something I'm still fascinated by, uh, having a vanishing point. Really, I mean, this is basic stuff, but it's actually so, it's vital to learn. It really is. But look at these gorgeous creations here and uh, techniques on how to create the same. Here, technique on using perspectives to create houses and plans. Really gorgeous book. Love, love, love it. Here is another one. Uh, this is by Lee J. Ames. The publisher is Watson Guptil. And it's Draw 50 Buildings and Other Structures. I went through a period where I was obsessed with drawing buildings and I have a deep obsession with architecture. Love this book as well. Again, step-by-step -step ways to draw all of these structures and look. Look how superb. So mapping the outline, the shapes, the block shapes, and then going on to add detail makes something so incredibly overwhelming and you know something you feel like you could never reach uh it, yeah it puts it in uh, it puts it in reach doesn't it here is the um basil basilica in moscow and then all different types of buildings there's a tudor house igloos teepees it's just a wonderful way again to develop your line work similarly i bought this one which i just adore <laughs> This is by Thibaut de Herum and it's called Draw Me a House Architectural Ideas, Inspiration and Colouring In. Okay, so adore, adore, adore this book. It's got everything from actual, const con like constructing buildings through to types of design. It's got various types of doors, door knockers, windows, you know, interior, like furniture, oh, tree houses. I mean, it's pure bliss. You can, again, work inside it. You can colour in, you can add patterning, or again, you can just get out your uh, scrapbook and create your own uh, lighting, really. It's just, again, that practice, practice, practice. Capitals, putting the capitals on columns. It's just a beautiful, beautiful book. I've had so very much fun with this. Next one, this again is marketed at kids. This is Ed Emberley. Love Ed Emberley's work. Learn to draw the Ed Emberley way. This one is published by Little Brown. Marketed at kids, but I have not stopped playing with this one. <laughs> Just have a look. So the in-process creations, simple triangles and lines become the most adorable little circus tent. Gas station, windmill, really accessible for kids you can see here creating animals so going from block shapes all the way through to animals vehicles on this side really cleverly done just love it so your little drawers will love this and so will you if you want to go for something a little bit more sophisticated sketch your world essential techniques for drawing on location this one is by james hobbs published by apple and again just beautifully crafted book and it's all about getting out and about. So this is on plein air, going, um, you know, street sketching really. Talks about different types of uh, sketchbooks and materials. And then just gives you little projects. Stop and look, learning to see by drawing calls for time and close observation. And this means slowing down, opening up to all that's around us. So yeah, talking about observation, uh, different techniques, drawing, speed drawing, small and fast. Um, oh, when the subject comes to you, love that. Learning how to look and observe, exploring themes, colour. It's just really, really inspirational. Getting out into parks. And it's also got some profiles too, which is lovely. Love it when books do that. Right, and here we have 52 Creative Exercises to Make Drawing Fun by Carla Sonheim. This is the Drawing Lab and it's for mixed media artists. Uh, and this is published by Quarry again. 
Love mixed media, a little bit obsessed by it. Do it digitally mostly, but would like to actually spend more time doing it, uh, you know, um, in real life. So hand rendered stuff, I'm particularly drawn to collage and would like to pursue collage more in my work. So this is an inspiring book, beautifully designed. Carla has a huge following and I've done a lot of these projects actually. They're just simple little ideas for drawing, <laughs> drawing cats in bed. This one I've done, this is blind contour, so basically you put your pen down and you just close your eyes and you draw and you don't look down. Uh, drawing pets, a day at the zoo, imaginary creatures, just different techniques using, you know, eyes only. Drawing um, different objects with different mediums and in different styles. Just really inspiring and lots of fun. I loved doing these Picasso animals. That was heaps and heaps of fun. So, yeah, creatively inspiring. Another one on mixed media, Creative Girl, Mixed Media Techniques for an Artful Life. This is by Danielle Donaldson, published by North Light Books. And again inside, really beautiful techniques. Look at this gorgeous gorgeous illustration here. So this is doodling using watercolour. Uh, this one is um, blending, working with white. I love working with white on colour. That's something I've done a lot both digitally and uh, hand rendered. Look here, those blocks. It's a bit hard to see, sorry. Those blocks there with the white on them. Beautiful. Uh, layering, random colours with watercolour. Oh, what have we got towards the back here? Look at these. If you love that really folksy sort of style of art, you'll have a ball with this. Right, so this one I've already shown in another video. Uh, to, 50 Ways to Draw Your Beautiful Ordinary Life. This is a flow book, flow magazine book, and it's just gorgeous. I've started doing it here, so you basically are given these ideas here, and then you can draw your own, which I've done on this side. Uh, start with another one here. Houses. Um, I did these. These. Love these ones. Really inspiring, particularly because it's getting so cold and I'm in my cozies. So I did these the other day. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. It's got wonderful inspirational ideas. It's got typically flow, sort of these gorgeous little nicky knacks that you can pull out and Look at this one. I love this one. This is this paper doll. I think I did one the other day. Where is she? Yeah, did a little outfit there. So this is a lot of fun and kids would absolutely love this too. How to Draw Anything by Mark Lindley. Landscapes, People, Animals, Cartoons. And that is published by Right Way. This is uh, sort of, it's more theory. So it just talks about, well, I guess it could be for beginners, but it could also be for people who are quite established just to give you more advanced techniques and ideas. And it's just the concepts behind drawing. So if you're really, you know, keen to, to learn without having to go to university <laughs> or college, then this might be a book for you to, uh, to read through and just gain some really clever um, techniques. Crafter Doodle is one of my absolute favorites by Jenny Doe, and this is published by Lark Crafts. A Adore her style. It's almost a little bit Japanese kawaii looking and I have had a lot of fun with this book. Really, really enjoyed it. So things like daily doodling, tie-dyed, um, a monster a day is really cute for kids, doodle medleys. Uh, oh, these are adorable, sweet little portraits. Just, just lots of beautiful creative prompts for people of all ages and all levels. Splatter doodles, love that kind of thing. Just adorable and step by step. I've done all this owl, I've done her. Oh, I've done so many, I did all of these. Just a lot of fun and great way to develop uh, your faces, eyes, ears, hair, noses, that kind of thing. And to learn to create your own style. This is a flow book again. It's actually just a colouring book, but I use it as inspiration to uh, come up with my own patterns and to practice pattern making. And it's just, as you can imagine from Flo, beautifully visual, beautiful visual inspiration. And not only does it give you inspiration to create your own patterns, but it also helps you understand how patterns are laid out and how they things fit together and the best way to lay out patterns for visual 
enhancement. So, for example, this one is actually, it's phenomenal, it's quite detailed. So pouring over these pages and practicing them in yourself is just a brilliant way to be able to come up with your own designs. Look at this, how gorgeous. So it's both an inspiration and I learn a lot from it as well. This one, again, is a colouring book, Mid-Century Modern Patterns. These are 30 original illustrations to colour, customise and hang by Jenny Ski and this is by Rockport. So I love mid-century modern anything and this features some beautiful simple design that again uplift and, insp and inspires me and helps me understand form. Love, 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 love. So simple, so effective. Called All Wrapped Up kind of obsessed with gift wrap so this is all from the 1960s <laughs> oh god just pure joy again an inspirational book full of color full of ideas full of superb color palettes when i do digital art if i fall in love with a particular color palette i will photograph or uh, scan in a page and i will eyedropper some of the colors sorry for that interruption my husband just rang uh, so yeah, I was saying that sometimes I will be inspired by a palette and I will scan it in or photograph it and then eyedropper it in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop and use some of those colourings in my own work and I'm particularly obsessed with retro palettes like these. I bought this recently, Pattern Design with over 1500 illustrations edited by Elizabeth Wilhide, I think, or Wilhide, uh, Thames and Hudson and again Similar to the wrapping paper one, this is just an extraordinary peek at a variety of patterns from Mermina Mermina BC through to modern day. And again, pure colour and pattern inspiration, pure joy. And this just arrived the other day, have quite the Orla Kylie obsession. And this one is called Pattern and it covers her work and her journey, her inspirations, but also reveals a lot of her beautiful artwork and her products and yeah, look at this, a section at the back of just pure, pure pattern that is extraordinarily beautiful. All right, moving on from patterns to printmaking, I have a few books, these are the only ones I could find. So uh, creative, Makers Simple Printmaking with Elizabeth Harbour and this is Mitchell Beasley. This is just a beautiful book. I really want to do more printmaking. It's something that I'm drawn to. Same with stamp making and it's going to be something for down the track because I just can't fit it. I nevertheless still look out for beautiful books. In this she covers a lot of different techniques. This is block printing, relief printing, folk art, some actual projects that you can make, cards, look at those adorable cards, simplicity is just divine, stencil printing, uh, marbling which can be so beautiful and what I would do with marbling is I would scan it in and I would use it in backgrounds in Adobe Illustrator when I put my books together, making your own mobiles of bags, all the different types of printing techniques, just gorgeous. This similarly is just divine. This is the printmaking book, Projects and Techniques in the Art of Hand Printing by Vanessa uh, Munsi and it's published by Guild of Master Craftsmen Publications. There you go. Didn't even know they existed. Check out the cover. So superb. And love the layout and design inside. And this is a bunch of different projects talks about the tools and materials for different types of printing. So we've got screen printing, there's wallpaper, tags, oh, lino printing, I want a lino print, oh my, wood cutting, Oy, relief printing, talking about your workspace and supplies, I mean really, just wonderful, wonderful stuff. If you're interested in printing, get this. And lastly, uh, this is by Laura Bethman, Hand Printing from Nature. This is by Story. Oh, gosh. Love spiral bound because they can lay flat and you can use them easily. Pressing plants. 
printing with ink on paper using leaves. Kids would love this. Printing press, printing surfaces, paper terminology, pressing tools for prints, different types of paper, approaching colour, oh, print projects with single and repeated motifs, look, just treasure. So again, lots of creative ideas, actual techniques for printing, heaps of projects that you can do yourself, you can do with the kids, just beautiful. I have quite the map obsession and I got quite a few map inspiration books. This one is Hand Drawn Maps for Creatives and it is by Helen Can and it's Thames Hudson. Oh, this is just wonderful. So again, we start with the structure of maps, lettering, cartouches, oh, love, keys and symbols and examples of how you could do them. Again, kids would go bananas. They could do their own house or town. Examples, a map of the villages of White Cliffs and St Barnabas. And then over to you gives you uh, ideas on how to create your own. Love that these books feature profiles on certain artists. Look at Tilly's work. Types of maps. Making maps with pictures, text maps, axonometric maps. It's an easy way to draw a map in 3D. Oh wow, kids will go bananas. Yeah, it's just the most beautiful tree maps. I mean, really. Phrenology maps. Phrenology was the suffused science of determining an individual's character by measuring the areas of the person's skull. How clever, how clever is this book? You want it, don't you? I know you do. I hope you can find it. Next one, Make Map Art. Creatively illustrate your world by Nate Padavik and Sally Swindle. This is Chronicle. I've used this a lot. I've had a lot of fun with this. You actually get this lovely little booklet here. And then some beautiful papers that you can create your maps on. See that? And inside, it shows you how to do the various maps, like the map of your hand. This is the phrenology one, the map of the head. This is one where you uh, can create a map of your own happiness, your road to happiness. Map of your town, party invitation and map. Picnic in the Park, it's just, it's really lovely, great fun for kids. This one is an interactive book of maps and worlds. It's published by Cicada. It's called You Are Here, written by Robin Jacobs. Again, a great project book for kids, or you. Talks about perspective. I've actually done this in my own room. <laughs> You can do it in the book, you can do it in your own scrapbook or journal, how to read maps, doing your own neighbourhood, street sense, big cities can be difficult to navigate, can you find how to get from Ocean Street to the corner of Barrington Road in London? <sighs> this talks about the separate of, um, arrondissements in Paris, subway maps, I mean, it's just an absolute joy. Map of the world, mark of seven continents on this map. Asia, Europe, oh wow, just this absolute treasure. I wish I had a million more hours in my day. Flags, housing, wonderful, wonderful stuff. I wanted to just show you a handful of graphic design books. I'm collecting more of them as I go through my journey into graphic design. The wonderful Sarah Foster, ex Walker Books, sent me this. She was doing a book clean out and I begged her for this. I have yet to dive into it because I'm so uh, contracted and deadlined. But thank you, Sarah. This is Hugh Williamson's Methods of Book Design and uh, that's published by Yale. Cannot wait to dive in and immerse. This is the Wall Street Journal's Guide to Information Graphics uh, because I love information graphics and I've wanted to do several books on those. And it's just a priceless way to understand how infographics work. That is published by W. 
Norton and Company. Another graphic design book. This is the Australian Style Manual. I have the text one and this is the graphic design one. These are the creators. I will list them at the bottom. And McGraw-Hill is the publisher. Uh, I, I very carefully selected these graphic design books because they are expensive. And what I do when I look for books like this is I seek them out visually. Sometimes it can be hard to find internal images of books, but if you persist, you should be able to find some. Sometimes even checking the actual publisher website is helpful. So uh, this I really loved the look of design-wise, and I also loved the content. It's really extensive. I love book design, book cover design, so I was thrilled that they included that. Everything from the technicalities of how uh, books are produced and how things are laid out and designed is included, uh, but also a lot of inspiration. Pure, pure heaven, worth it. Then this one I found, Visual Storytelling, Infographic Design in News. This is Liu Yikun and Dong Zhao, and this is published by... I can't see, it's too tiny. Images Publishing. Oh, this is just glorious. Visual storytelling was enough to hook me anyway, but again, that in infographic content is just extraordinarily and beautifully done. This is hard to do. This is not easy. The balance, getting the information lined up in a way that's comprehensible, uh, the colouring, the format, the you know the the delicate balance between uh, presenting the information in a comprehensible way and making it visually pleasing, adding all of those gorgeous visuals is really difficult. It's a real art, and it's something I'm quite obsessed by. This book is exquisite. So I encourage you to look that up if you're keen on such things. I just wanted to show you three books. If you're interested in illustrating children's books uh, or have a particular passion for illustrations in children's books, these are three that I recommend. Uh, this is Wonder Book, The Illustrated Guide to Creating Imaginative Fiction by Jeff Vandermeer, and that's Abram's Image. It's hard to define what this book is. It's pure inspiration. It's cray cray in terms of its content. It's just superb. Um, again, I have got to spend some time on it. I've only sort of flicked through it, but it covers so, so very much. It's such a rich compendium. So we have an introduction. Um, we talk about uh, instructional art, inspiration in the creative life, the importance of imaginative play, the ecosystem of a story, narrative life forms, the elements of fiction, the roles and types of imagination, beginnings and endings, narrative design, characterization, word building. It's 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 beyond it's beyond comprehension what this fellow has put into this book. So this could appeal to illustrators, it could appeal to writers, editors, designers, and also books of many types not just children's books. This one is exquisite. This is 50 Years of Illustration, Lawrence Zegan and Caroline Roberts, published by Lawrence King. Love Lawrence King's work. And again, what can I say? Just an absolute joy, covering a heck of a lot of designers and creators. It's just wildly beautiful and fascinating and inspiring. So again, across genre, love, love, love it. And lastly, illustrating children's books, creating picture books for publication with Martin Salisbury. This is published by Barron's. And I haven't looked at this for quite a while. I got it a long time ago, but what it covers, it covers a brief history of children's books over the ages, drawing, Life Studio, On Location, Case Studies, Media Materials and Techniques, Character Development, the Picture Book, Illustration for Older Children, Nonfiction, Design Typography and Getting Published. So I know you're going to race for this because it's just a wealth of information and inspiration. So if you're interested in honing your skills and if you're interested in multitasking and not just doing one thing, like me, then this would be priceless for you to 
I recommend you read through it and whatever resonates with you, explore that a little bit more, whether it's layout, whether it's design, editing, um, yeah. So that I highly recommend as well. And on that note, as I finish, I'm going to let you know that I will soon be taking you through uh, some layout and design of children's picture books. I'll be putting that here on my channel. And yeah, it'll be a, just a wonderful way for you to learn more about structuring your own books, whether you are at just at, you know, learning level or advanced level, it might be an inspiring thing for you to uh, listen to. And I'll do that really soon. So thanks for listening. And I hope that these completely inspire you. And I will be back again soon. See ya.